Hey, this is Daniel Alcyon with EcstaticExistence.com and I just wanted to talk with you today about the animals. You know, I'm always very connected to the animals, but recently I've been feeling an even deeper connection. As I look around the world and I see these other creatures that we are sharing this beautiful space with, I'm just so thankful to be here, you know? We all share the same air, we share the same water, and the animals have some great lessons for us if we're open enough to receive them. The Native Americans call this animal medicine, and every single species has a very specific type of medicine to offer us. So hummingbird medicine is different than snake medicine, is different than dolphin medicine. And no matter what species we're talking about, animals have a really cool way of purely being themselves, right? So an animal doesn't worry about if they're being good enough, if they're doing it right. A young cheetah doesn't worry about if it's doing it right, if it's going to be the best cheetah, if it's running fast enough. It simply is the best that it can be and lives up to its fullest, you know? A young polar bear doesn't ever worry like oh my gosh am I gonna properly turn into a polar bear am I gonna be the right kind of polar bear that all the other polar bears like and get along with doesn't even think about it it specifically is in the moment and it lives its own essence another thing that all of the animals no matter what species do is they're very unashamed of their own gifts right if anything they're proud of it and they amplify it you look in the animal world in the animal kingdom of like a peacock they are the biggest proudest boldest peacock they can be um an octopus is just going to be the best octopus it can be amplifying its own natural gifts and abilities but we put this human mind into place this large cerebral cortex and now all of a sudden we start analyzing what it is that we're doing and sometimes we try to be something other than we are so a human will think, oh, well, I really love singing and dancing, but I don't know if I could ever pay the bills doing that, so I'm going to get a desk job and be a data entry specialist. Oh, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? So, you know, or another thing we'll do is um, we'll really feel like we fit in with one specific group of people, but then we'll shift ourselves and, like, try to fit in with another. That's a human thing. Animals don't do that. You won't see a cobra pretending to be a swan. It just doesn't happen. Even the animals that camouflage themselves to kind of look like another, they're still in and of themselves. They're not actually trying to be this other thing. So we can learn a lot from animals there. And another great thing that animals do is they are completely non-judgmental. They're so loving. Any of you out there that have a cat or a dog or companion animal, they accept you wholly and totally for who you are and for what you are. They love unconditionally. And this is something that humans have a hard time with, with our brains and with our reasoning and our selfish means. You know, we like to do things that are going to benefit us. And the animals are so giving of themselves to support all of us. Um, yeah, it's, it's kind of a sad state of affairs. And so I invite you to connect deeply with our animal friends, the animals that we're sharing this planet with. Because after all, we are all earthlings. We all breathe the same air. We share the same water. As I'm looking out the window right now on this boat, there's a lovely little baby cormorant that just popped up out of the water. It has these red eyes, and it's looking around kind of awkwardly. It's just gorgeous. It's so lovely. And the cormorants specifically have really cool medicine because they're the master of all domain. They can fly, they can go onto the land, and then they can even go under the water. They're really versatile and adaptable, those cormorants. Well, this topic also kind of tugs at my heartstrings because many people out there claim to be animal lovers and then turn a blind eye when it comes to putting that extra slab of bacon on their cheeseburger. And this really hurts. Uh, all the animals have feelings. They're sentient. They're aware. They feel pain. And they don't want to die. So, whatever your dietary choices are, I do invite you to check in with the honest heart and connection of the creatures around us. After all, 
We are just another creature on this earth. We're all earthlings. To learn about the spiritual meaning of specific animals, you can look up animal medicine. If you Google animal medicine, you should find a bunch of different so sites and sources there that'll teach you about different things. Um, one way that animal medicine shows up in your life is like this cormorant that just popped up. If you have an animal that shows up readily in your life or just pops up right in front of you or maybe shows up in a repeated pattern, like all of a sudden you've seen rattlesnakes in media and in consciousness and in movies for, you know, several times in a week. Maybe look it up. Look up rattlesnake medicine. Which, as a matter of fact, just mentioning rattlesnake for randomly out of my mind, rattlesnake medicine is about stepping into your spiritual leadership. Rattlesnake medicine is about, in a way, becoming your own version of a shaman, of a medicine person. And carrying some pretty powerful medicine that even at times can hurt you know it like to real transformation hurts and stings so if you carry that rattlesnake medicine it's about sometimes you got to give that bite but in the end it's about waking people up anyway i'm just going off here but animal medicine check it out and please don't eat our animal friends i love you all so much you're better than that see you next time